Hey, what's up? The Lenovo IdeaPad Gaming 3 is Lenovo's most affordable gaming laptop. Today I have its fresh, 7th generation, in my review. The model has received an updated design, hardware, and screen size. Let's get acquainted with it and compare it sometimes with the previous generation. In the beginning, of course, the appearance. IdeaPad Gaming matured and became more like the more expensive Legion series. Everything reminds you of them. From the completely flat lid and new hinges, to the more aggressive hot air vent holes and the location of connectors on three sides. If you ask me, the model could easily be called, for example, Legion 3. At this laptop is still not ashamed to take to the office. Except for the aforementioned cooling system holes only rare blue accents hint at a gaming theme. In terms of materials at first glance nothing has changed. The case is still plastic. The plastic is solid and from a distance looks like metal. The assembly is good. In my case, nothing when squeezing did not squeak. What has definitely changed, it's marking. If its predecessor in black color got dirty in a second, the new one retains an acceptable appearance longer. I would like to dwell separately on dimensions. Either because of the increased screen diagonal or because of the improved cooling system or most likely because of both factors, the seventh generation has changed a little in size and weight. If the width remained the same, the notebook has added two and a half centimeters or one inch in depth, most likely due to the tail behind the hinges of the top cover, and 350 grams of weight. But it has become thinner by three millimeters. The layout of the ports has been completely changed. Now it's not only on the sides, but also on the back, which I, as the owner of the Legion, only welcomed. And so, on the left side is USB-A version 3.2 and a combined audio jack. On the right side is another USB-A version 3.2. The rest of the ports have been moved to the back. Here we have HDMI, Ethernet, USB-C 3.2 Gen 2, with support for power delivery 3.0 charging and DisplayPort 1.4 video transfer, and the Lenovo power connector. There is an interesting nuance with the USB-C connector. The lower-end configurations with RTX 3050 and 3050 t graphics cards have a faster Thunderbolt 4 port instead of the USB-C 3.2 I have. Such an injustice. The screen in IdeaPad Gaming is even more interesting. After all, in the new generation under this name you can choose both 15-inch and 16-inch models. I, of course, begged for a review of the version with a bigger screen. This is a 16-inch IPS panel with an aspect ratio of 16 to 10. With such proportions fit more all sorts of panels and menus. But when you watch YouTube at the top and bottom there are small black bars. And here again there are two options to choose from, with a resolution of 2560 by 1600 and 1920 by 1200. I advise you to choose carefully. The first option is more suitable for working with content, because both the brightness is higher and more details are visible. The second option is preferable for gamers. Fewer pixels make it easier for the graphics card to play hard games. I have the second option in my review. The brightness here is medium, 350 nits. The screen refresh rate is 165 Hz, 100% coverage of the sRGB color space, and support for AMD FreeSync. In order to save battery power, for example, when running on battery, the screen frequency can be quickly changed to 60 Hz by the function plus R key combination. By the way, you can open the screen to a fairly large angle. Not 180 degrees, but not bad either. On top of the screen there is a webcam with a handy curtain, plus two microphones on the sides. I was surprised by the use of the module, able to write video in full HD. The quality of the picture is moderate, but clearly better than 720p. The keyboard is traditionally good. Full size, with a separate number block and large cursor keys. Quiet, with a short stroke and a clear click. It is convenient to play games and to type large texts. As with the screen, there may also be options here. Somewhere there is a version with 4-zone RGB backlighting. In my case it is a single color white backlight with two brightness levels. Above the keyboard is a round power button. Similar to the Legion's, it changes color depending on the mode of the laptop. The touchpad here is plastic, of medium size and does not seem to have changed compared to its predecessor. The notebook speakers are located in the corners at the bottom. The volume is good, but the sound quality is just average. 
From the new only change the design with a blue grille inside. Dual configuration. Usually, similar laptops in reviews shine with Intel Core i7-12700H. I have a more affordable Core i5-12450H variant. It consists of four performance cores and four economy cores. It has 12 threads of output. It also comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM in two DDR4-3200 slabs and a 512 gigabytes Intel M2 SSD. For the latter, the crystal disk test kept freaking out with the right speed results, but in the daily work of the laptop it was okay. The discrete NVIDIA RTX 3060 is responsible for graphics and Realtex module for wireless interfaces, providing Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.1. What's in terms of upgrades? RAM is implemented in two slots, not soldered. Also, on board are two M2 slots for SSD drives, one of which is already occupied. The slots are different sizes, 2280 and 2242, and connected to different interfaces, one to PCIe 3 and the other to PCIe 4. So be careful. There are several important hardware settings in the Lenovo Vantage app. That's why I'll mention them here. First, it is the choice of thermal mode, quiet, balanced and performance. It is responsible for hardware power limits and cooling system performance. Productive, for example, is the most powerful and noisiest. Secondly, the modes of operation of graphics. In fact, the options for using integrated and discrete graphics cards. Purely discrete mode is not available here, because the laptop has no MUX switch. Thirdly, the possibility of limited overclocking of discrete graphics. Some synthetic tests of the CPU. I ran them both in balanced and performance mode. The difference is minimal. That is why I will not duplicate the results. I will only say that in balanced mode a bit more power is given to the processor and in performance mode more power to the graphics card. So, Geekbench 1613 points in single core and 8423 in multi-core tests. Cinebench 1663 points in single core and 10781 in multi-core tests. Corona Benchmark rendered the test scene in 2 minutes and 18 seconds. Well, all the PC Mark 10 results are in the screenshot. The junior processor showed itself unexpectedly well in real-world tasks as well. Of course, I used both 4K source video in Premiere Pro and multi-layer illustrations in Photoshop, and the performance of the laptop, given the hardware in them, is excellent. From interesting, if the final export in Premiere Pro is more dependent on the power of discrete graphics cards, the work when editing with Timeline is more comfortable on processors from Intel, smoother than on my Ryzen 7 5800H. Probably the better optimization of Adobe products for Intel Quick Sync plays its role. The cooling system here is slightly improved compared to the last generation. Yes, the notebook in performance mode and with a serious load is still warm and noisy, as any other gaming laptop, but tolerable. Temperatures are okay too. I will mention them in the gaming tests. Due to better cooling the manufacturer increased the TGP of the RTX 3060 graphics card from 90 to 105 watts. Yes, the increased screen resolution partially eats up this advantage. But even in this case, the IdeaPad Gaming is comfortable enough to play modern games with ray tracing even in native resolution. Synthetics for a beginning. I ran the 3D Mark Time Spy Test for the curious. The result is 7,996 points. Now the real games. As usual a few projects from different years. Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Native resolution, DLSS balance, graphics preset highest. Average of 108 frames per second. Horizon Zero Dawn. Native resolution, DLSS balance, graphics press ultimatum quality. Average frame rate of 90 frames per second. Finally, Cyberpunk 2077. Here, as with the previous generation, maximum settings were difficult to achieve. Native resolution, ultra preset with ray tracing, DLSS auto. Average frame rate of 44 frames per second. On the verge of being playable. Let's do something about it. Still native resolution, DLSS auto. But change the preset to ultra without ray tracing. The average frame rate is 71 frames per second. That's great.
It is nice that the notebook pulls any games in native resolution, although in the heaviest projects you will have to sacrifice ray tracing or other graphics settings. And the temperatures are quite acceptable even at maximum load. The CPU sometimes heated up to 85 degrees, the graphics card to a maximum of 67 degrees, still within the limits of reasonableness. A couple of words about battery life. The new IdeaPad Gaming 3 has increased the battery to 71 Watt asterisk H. The laptop in silent mode, dimmed brightness and 60 Hz screen is enough for about 6 to 7 hours with office load or watching YouTube. When playing games at full power, don't expect more than an hour and a half or two hours. In the set there is such a medium-sized power supply for 230 watts. Just a baby compared to the 300 watt power supply from my Legion. In Lenovo Vantage you can activate fast charging or save battery life by charging only up to 60%. And finally, that white backpack in which I was brought a laptop. Lenovo has a cool thing, backpacks for specific lines of laptops. In this case, this one is called that, the Lenovo IdeaPad Gaming Modern Backpack. Like the current generation IdeaPad Gaming, it comes in white and black with blue elements that echo the design of the laptop. The material is polyester with a waterproof coating. The cool thing about this particular polyester is that it is derived from three recycled half-liter plastic bottles. So eco-activists will probably be happy. Well, the stains on this white surface wash out just fine. The backpack is big. In addition to your laptop and additional accessories, you can fit a bunch of other stuff. The top of the main compartment rolls up and is secured with Velcro and a carabiner. On the front a small flat pocket with a zipper. There is a ventilated back and a luggage strap. Two elasticized liquor pockets on the sides for water bottles. All in all, a comfortable, eco-friendly and practical accessory to pair with the IdeaPad Gaming. Prices and Conclusions The price of Lenovo IdeaPad Gaming 3 starts from about €1,200. For this money we get a good screen, powerful, though not top-end, hardware, good build quality and a comfortable keyboard. The laptop in the 7th generation has become a little closer to the more expensive Legion line. That's been it. Thank you for watching.